But I, I want to talk about that debacle later on, too. But before we do any of that, I think our special guest is on the line. It's time to talk food. It's time to talk being a chef. And it's time to talk being a Master Chef Junior. Is this the one and only Master Chef Junior winner, Logan? Oh, he couldn't be anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Totally Driven Radio, Logan. Thank you. I, I hope you're ready to talk because I got a lot of questions for you. All right, I've got I've got plenty of time. All right, cool. This is gonna be good. Okay, I, I, I gotta say, like, I've been watching the the whole Master Chef uh, series of shows. I guess three years now, and. Watching the adults was mind blowing to me because I just couldn't comprehend the whole world of being a chef like that. It was not what I pictured, let alone being home chefs being like that. But when they started doing the show with you guys, with the kids, it was like mind completely blown. And I sit there with my mouth open every show, and it just amazes me how much you kids know and what you can do. And how old are you? I'm 12 years old, and I'm pretty sure that when when the show first came out, that's exactly how Dad was like. It was like, oh man, look at all that food! Oh, I burned the I burned the instant lemonade. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. That would be me. Like I- I'm the one that'd be bringing like uh, hot pockets or pop tarts or something like that. <laughs> now, how, how, when Definitely. did you actually when did you actually start cooking? Like how old were you? Well, I was about three when I made my uh, when I started really making uh, food. I started with uh, like a uh, one of those what are those things called uh, raviolis? Yeah, raviolis. Uh, those were really good every Christmas, and uh, also pigs in a blanket. Yes, uh, I made a lot of those with a little little uh, pig and then the little pop pop and bake uh, crescent roll, and it was. It was a, a fun time. Wow. Look, at, at three years old, like, were you, like, helping your parents make this? Or it, it was, like, you're helping and then all of a sudden you're like, I want to try this myself? No, no, it's just mainly uh, just mainly me actually just making it. No no real help. Uh, it was wow. just like that when I, uh, when I made my signature spice rub. Um, the, Mom wasn't even in the uh, kitchen that, that uh, time. Uh, and I, I made the spice rub, and then she was like, oh, yeah, what'd you put in it? And I'm like, and then uh, I got it, and then I made it a few more times, and that's, that's kind of how it went. And that a lot of this, this uh, cooking, the, especially the creative aspect and the beginning part, is really driven by me. Wow. So th- did you basically, like, it sounds like you like pretty much taught yourself was what you're saying then. Well, my ma showed me like here's how you uh, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna play with the kitchen. We're we're gonna play play there and uh we're gonna have we're gonna make pigs in a blanket and so you take the little strip of the pop and break stuff and then you roll the little little uh pig in it and then you pop it then you make these a bunch and then you pop them in the oven. And that's of course she she popped them in the oven for me because uh <laughs> It would have been bad if I burned myself. Then I would have been like, no, I don't ever need to cook again. I got burned. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, see, and that's right there is something that kind of, like, amazes me, too, because I I, I worked in the, the pizza business for, like, 16 years. And I, I actually owned my own shop at 18 years old. And working with like you know you have to work with uh, the local the, the city and health department and all that and they tell you like nobody under like 16 can use this a slicer be body oven etc cetera, etc cetera. and i always I, w- I sit there and i watch that with you guys and i, s- I would say to my wife like technically they're not allowed to be doing this like they're not allowed to be ar- in, around the stove in the ovens like this <laughs> well well part of the reason why why we're we're allowed to do that is a. Uh... There's of course a, a little um, waiver that you have to sign, so uh, it, it kind of makes sure that we're all physically protected. And uh, plus, plus if you're if you're on the show, you, you shouldn't burn yourself that often. Right. But <laughs> yeah. I still have my fair good. share of burns. 
Wow. I had my fair share of burns, but no no cuts ever. Never really cut That's myself. That's good. Don't jinx yourself. Yeah. Watch yourself. Now, were you yeah, a fan well, of the let's show? See, where, where's the nearest wood on here? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> had to knock on that wood. <laughs> were you a fan of the show before you went and tried it out? Well, uh, I went and tried out, and uh, of course I watched Solo Master Chef, and I I really enjoyed the mystery boxes. Those were one of my favorite challenges. And then uh, then there were the team challenges. Those were great. And then uh, I watched Master Chef Junior, and I thought, oh, I could do that. And Dad, and uh, of course uh, Dad was like, well, we'll take you to casting call. If you really think that you can do it and you can win, then we'll take you to the casting call and and kind of put. Put the money where your mouth is. So, and uh, as you can tell, uh, I did win Master Chef Junior, and so that that kind of amazed my parents. And then they were like, "Oh man, but but this time uh, a few years ago, you you thought that you could just do it, and you could." And that that was really the the really cool part about about doing Master Chef was actually doing it. And then when you win, you're like, well, it always happens to somebody else. It, it never really happens to you in, in all of our minds, but it's really mind-blowing when it actually happens to you. Right. Wow. So being that you you had seen the shows, and, and you had seen the shows with the adults, and then you saw the junior show, the season, the first season before your season, watching, first off, the adult shows – and then thinking about going and trying out, were you intimidated by, you know, especially Gordon Ramsay? Oh no, no, I'm not. I'm not intimidated by uh, by going out any anywhere and asking for anything. That was uh, one of the great things that my parents taught taught me is that uh, you, if you don't ask, you don't get. So that's w- one of the reasons why I had to go. And well, I, what? Why well, I went and auditioned, and I wasn't very shy. And plus, Gordon Ramsay's really a nice guy. He he's there to to get you better, and that if he criticizes you, that you have to learn to to use it more as a constructive criticism, and right. not just like, oh, your food's not not perfect, but why is it not perfect, and how can I make it better? Huh. Very interesting. So, when you tried out then when you were actually at the tryouts and going through that whole process, when you found out you made it on the show, were you just completely shocked? Well, well, my, my parents were, were completely shocked. And I, I was halfway shocked because, cause I, as I told you, I thought that I could go on the show and win. So I was like, oh, good. But, yeah, yeah, I was, I was pretty shocked with, after going through the, the entire audition process, which I can't tell you because we don't want people really preparing for it, and then it's not like off the off the top of your head knowledge, then right. But it, it was a very very fun experience, and I had a great time. Now, how about that? Like, did you prepare for it? Because we talked to, um, I guess it was two years ago when Luca won. Master Chef. We talked to him afterwards, and he said, like, he like literally decided because he had tried out before and he didn't make it, and then he he came back and he quit his job and just cooked every day, preparing to go back and try to win it. So did you like practice like that every day to be ready for this? Well, well, um, I don't really. It's kind of hard to. To really get get a really 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 hard mindset like this, like I'm going to cook every single day, especially with the dishes. That part gets right. really tiring. It's like, so yeah, yeah, I did prepare. Uh, of course, of course, you you would think that everybody would prepare. So yeah, yeah, I did prepare, and I, and I uh, uh, one of our local chefs here taught me how to cook seafood because my mom's allergic, and uh, well, I already told you about that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's uh. Yeah, so I had a chef by a tsunami teach me how to cook a uh, seafood, and uh, that that was probably probably about about I had my mom teach me a few things too, but yeah, overall it was just a very fun experience and pretty much how it went. Now, 
now when this chef is teaching you, I mean, he had to be blown away by this uh, 10, 11-year-old kid at the time, the way you're so talented. I mean, was he shocked? Did he ever see another child like this before? Well, um, it, it was a uh, it was a really cool cool uh, experience being there. And uh, uh, no, not really. He wasn't all that shocked because well, he really understood the passion behind the 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 culinary industry and about how there are people the the chefs here in Memphis, Tennessee are very very open with their knowledge and with their uh, with their ways and so. They're they're very they're very nice and so he really saw that there was a a real nice passion in me and so that's one of the reasons why I think that he decided to help me along this fabulous journey. Wow. Now now going back to the the, the Master Chef shows again, were you fans of any of the past contestants from any of the shows? <laughs> oh well, well, all the contestants from from all the past shows were really great. I remember we were uh, watching uh, the Lucas season and and being like, oh, look, he's making pasta. Oh, uh, we we make a lot of pasta here. Uh, it, nice. Well, my mom's Italian, so there, there's always a lot of pasta. And it's kind of cool to see all that. And to, yeah, yeah, I, all the past contestants of, of MasterChef and MasterChef Junior are all really great. What did you think from, from Lucas' season of uh, Chrissy. Which one was that? Chrissy, the the, the loudmouth. Uh, I don't really remember that. I, I just really remember the really happy parts, like uh, Luca and making the dish for his wife. I remember that. I remember him winning. Gotcha. Uh, not too sure. It, it's just really, it's just a really fun thing, and I don't really, I don't really spend like hours like memorizing it and like. Oh right. well, they made this last season, so they're not going to make us do it again this season, and and all that. Uh, <laughs> if they're gonna, if they're gonna have us do it, then we're gonna do it. And right. there's really nothing that we can do. And that that's about all I remember from most of the seasons. Is, uh, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so how about the, now the judges? Like before you went into it, did you have a favorite judge? And then once you went through it, did your Choice of favorite judge change? Uh, that, that's a very tough, tough question, and uh, it was it was really a tie between uh, uh, Gordon and Graham. They were really the, they really taught us a lot throughout the the entire show about uh, everything, and Joe really taught us a lot about the restaurant business and about how you got to in the pop up restaurant that you got to keep the food coming in order to make the customers happy, and that's right. That's one of the things that that Joe taught us that was really nice, and uh, and no, no, nothing really changed. Uh, Gordon got a slight edge over Graham, and then Graham got a slight edge over Gordon, and and Joe <laughs> got back up there, and and oh, it, it was a great time. It was a great time with the judges. Yeah, whenever I watch it, like out of the three, like it seems, it always seemed to me like when Joe gave a compliment, it meant more. Than the other two, because getting a compliment out of him was always the hardest. Well, uh, it, it, it's just great. It's just great to to be mentored by the judges and to also actually meet the judges because you see them on sure. the TV shows all the time, and you're just like, "Oh wow, I'm actually seeing them in person. They're real." Right. <laughs> and that that's. That's kind of the cool. That's kind of the cool part. You get kind of a starstruck moment. <laughs> we all had that moment walking into the to the master chef <laughs> kitchen, looking at all the uh, Breville sponsored equipment. All that was really cool and and really nice. And then there were all the ingredients, and those were all all super fresh and, and really cool. And uh, then there was the the actual kitchen, which is uh, kind of a set. So. A few things broke right. down. Uh, my water pump broke up, broke down from my uh, sink, and my stove went oh, wow. one day. So yeah, and they, they still huh. didn't fix that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wow, that's uh, yeah. well, that was pretty much 
how all the contestants felt about the uh, about the Master Chef Kitchen. Now, how about the contestants themselves? Like going into this, did you have any um, choices that you thought were going to be your toughest opponents? Well, uh, everybody really looked at each other as a, a competition in, in one way, but then when you really go boil, when when it really boils down, you're not really competing against them. You're competing against yourself, and a, and really against your yourself in the sense that you've got to always do something better than the last hmm. one. It's like you can't have an awesome dish and then have a, a sucky dish. you got to have an awesome right. dish and then an even better dish which is one of the really hard parts, and that you, when you really go in there that you're not really focusing that much on the competition, that you're really focusing on your cooking. That's an interesting way of looking. I never would have thought of looking at it that way, that you yourself is your your biggest competition. That's interesting. You're way advanced smart for a 12-year-old. You realize that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, my, I do a lot of math. The math is is the worst now. Uh, I'm homeschooled, so ma, so my mom teaches me everything, and, and it's like, oh yes, now, now solve for x, and everything's over four, and then times ten to the second, and then, and then it's like x to the third equals y to the fifth, and then it's oh god, and, <laughs> and it's all over a fraction bar, and I'm like. I don't like fractions that much, and so that that's uh that's probably that's probably the hardest thing, and that is spelling. But I'm getting better at spelling. <laughs> you know, and that was something I was really interested in too. Like, I was wondering your school situation, because it, it did seem like uh, you were home during the day. So I was like, wow, I wonder what the the school situation is here. And I was wondering, like. How how like your kid your friends and fellow peers um, around you, if you were in school, like what were their feelings like when you made it onto the show and were they watching? Were they supportive of you? Well, uh, well, I'm homeschooled, so it's just me, and uh, that's about it. I have I have a, a, a group of friends, and uh, it was kind of interesting when when I went away. They were like, oh. All right, so so you went on vacation, and like after after a few few things, it's like, huh, you're still on vacation. It's just like even more, and and then it's like you're still on vacation. <laughs> hmm, something seems a bit fishy here. So you and, never uh, told them that, that yeah, you but, you went out to do that. Oh no, no. That that's one of the things that that uh, you gotta keep keep a secret, and that that's one of the hardest things is you uh, you win and then you get back and you're like, oh man, I gotta, I can't tell my friends, I can't tell my relatives, can't tell anybody, and it, it's it's very hard. It is very hard. That must have been killing you. <laughs> I I would have been losing my mind. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep, that that happened a few times. Wow. Uh, it, it was killer, <laughs> that weight. Now, back to uh, the actual competition. I guess when you guys did, well, I, I guess it was a pop-up restaurant where you guys were cooking for the food critics yeah. and you were broken down the two teams. Um, that one, I, it seemed like to me that was the first time Gordon raised his voice to the kids. And the kid, I, 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 do you remember what you said? Because I think you said something funny at that point. Uh, I can't remember. I'm not I can't too remember. sure. Uh, that, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, but that that was a that was probably one of the the best days of the the entire competition because when when you watch all the Gordon Ramsay uh, TV shows, he's he's yelling at them. They're in the kitchen. It's and then when when you actually go on and you're and you're in the thick of it and it's like oh man this is so cool and I mean besides from the confetti falling that was probably the the best uh, day of the entire competition. Wow, but I mean when, at that point though when he raised his voice to you guys, your team really seemed to uh, like uh, you guys were talking like you, you, should we quit 
should we are we just going home now? Like you just thought you were going to be eliminated. Uh, actually, I thought that that was the uh, blue team. That oh, was, was the, blue the other team? team? That, uh, the blue team that uh, Gordon talked to you that way. Oh, yeah, that was the all blue right. team. Wow. That, that was My nuts. bad. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty My sure bad. they weren't that bad. <laughs> uh, so, all right, so... um. But after that, after that specific test you guys did, it seemed too like you really came into your own and really started to up your game. Well, that, that's one of the things about the pop up restaurant is that it it was a very demanding day. It, it was it was very very tough on all of us. But that when when at the end of it, you you had to cook for all of those people, and the and that was probably really tough on us. And then once you once you get done with that, then you realize that it's it's kind of stepped up because you're in the top four now. And now it's it's really hard to be like, oh, you you were you were bad, but you weren't as bad as those those people. And that it really what it eventually boils down to is this is. This is it. You you got to go big or go home, and that's that's what it boils down to. Go big or go home, and that's what you did. You went big, and you made it into the finals. At, now at that yeah, point, okay. like, it, it seems like at, at at any point, it seems like you really were not nervous at all. You seemed pretty confident the whole time. Then, well, you you, you all have to be nervous because. It could, it could change instantly. You might have won the, like the th- take the cupcake challenge for example. Me, me and Sean won the cupcake challenge, but you, you don't know whether or not they're gonna say you're cooking or you're not, and that anything could happen in there, and that's one of the key things that you have to be prepared for, is that you don't know. The second that you think that you know what's gonna happen, it flips on you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so when you made it into the finals, like, were you, were you nervous at all? Were you just again focused? Were you just not even worrying about uh, Samuel? You just focused on yourself and not defeating yourself? Well, yes, yes. In a way that you have to be focused on yourself because this is. This is uh, your your final meal. This is it. There's no like, oh, redo, redo. We're we're going back in there. We're gonna redo this all over again. It, it, they just don't do that. And so that's one of the things that you have to remember is that this has to be your best meal, and that if right. it isn't, then you're not. You, you don't really deserve it because it wasn't your best. If your best was a few a few shows ago, then it, you just don't deserve it. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, what were the dishes you made in the finals again? Do you remember? Oh, God, those dishes. Um, <laughs> the reason why is that everybody asked them. They're like, all right, here we go. Here's the uh, dishes. For the appetizer, it was a grilled spot prawn with grilled romaine heart, a smoked saffron aioli, and an olive caper tempanade. For the main course, it is a salt-crusted branzino with roasted baby vegetables and chimichurri sauce. And for dessert, it's a lemon madeleine with goat cheese mousse, berry compote, and uh, some micro basil. Now, I, and, and I, I want you to... I, I, want... I said that a few times. <laughs> I want you to know, like, I I don't know what none of that stuff is. Like, I never would have, I could have picked that stuff out of a hat, and I still wouldn't even know what it is. Like, <laughs> that, right, and that's you, the part that I'll blows me I away. Can, I can get it to you. All right, so okay, um, the grilled spot prawn is like a mix between a shrimp and a lobster, and then I grilled it. Okay. Okay. And the grilled romaine heart is where you take uh, the center of the romaine. The uh, uh, cabbage or lettuce, romaine lettuce, and then you okay. chop that in half and then you grill it. 
And the olive caper tempanade is where you take olives and capers and oil and you put it in a food processor. Uh, smoked saffron aioli is where you take um, where you take an egg and you put it in the blender and you make the, the aioli, which is uh, mayonnaise basically. And then you mm-hmm. and then you put the saffron in it and then you put it in a bag and then you pull out the polystyrene smoking gun and you smoke it. And uh, it's a it's a wonderful tool. Uh, I believe that I might be having a... I think I should have a video coming up on that on my YouTube channel and a blog post. And uh, then you go to the... I think that that covered it. Yeah, that covered it. And then um, then you go to the main course, which is a whole fish, a whole Mediterranean fish, stuffed with uh, Meyer lemons, butter, and some herbs. And then you put that on a bed of salt, and then you cover it with salt which kind of makes it into a tandoori oven that kind of seals it. And then okay. roasted baby vegetables is baby vegetables that you put in the oven. And the chimichurri sauce is like a, a vinegary uh, a cilantro sauce. And then the dessert, the lemon madeleine is, uh, madeleine is like a French, a French fluffy, uh, fluffy, uh, um, like a mini cake, like a mini fluffy cake thing. Okay. And then uh, goat cheese mousse is where you take the goat cheese and you whip it with some cream and you make a mousse out of it. And uh, let's see, then there was the uh, berry compote where you take blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, and then you add lemon juice and sugar, and then you cook that down. And then micro basil is basil grown at a, at a very tiny level. And uh, that, that should about covered it. I, I love the fact that the twelve year old has to dumb it down for the forty four year old. <laughs> I mean and honestly, that's how I feel every week when I watch those shows. Like I I'm just amazed. It it's just mind blowing to me. It really is. <laughs> so I and, and I gotta say this, and honestly, I feel bad, but my my number one pick to win it all from day one of the show was Samuel. And when you beat him, <laughs> yeah. I was completely stunned. I could not believe it. So congratulations <laughs> to you. Thank you. I and I felt he, he looked so devastated. I felt so bad for him. Well, all the kids in there thought that they could win it, and they thought that not only could they win it, but they were going to win it, and that's what they all thought. Right. Now, after you won it, I mean. I mean, you're you're king of the mountain, king of the mountain of junior chefs. Yeah. Like, did you realize at that point, as the confetti is coming down on your head and everything, you're being handed the trophy, how much your life was about to change? Well, y- yes and no. Uh, yes, in a way, I thought about it, and no, no, not in a way, because nobody does those confetti like Hollywood. Not, not even New True. York do confetti like Hollywood. So it's it's uh, it's going down. I don't know how many tons of confetti they used, but I'm thinking it was around two, <laughs> two tons of confetti. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, yeah, I thought I kind of thought about it with uh, winning the the trophy, the the prize money, and the uh, the title. That and then I didn't really think about it because all the confetti was falling. And I and I knew right. that there were going to be interviews, but I didn't think about it at that time. And I and I knew that there was going to be a lot of stuff, but I didn't think about it, which is why I thought about it a few days after I won. <laughs> wow. Now, how about the prize? Like with the adults, they get a book deal for a cookbook now. So do you get that as well, or they don't give that to the junior? Well, so far they haven't given me a cookbook deal, but I am working on my own cookbook. So I, I oh, am cool. working on that, and, uh, trying to trying to get that all written. And I've got my spice rub, which I created when I ate, when I was eight, and it's uh, Logan's rub, Fiesta blend, and then out of Logan's rub, there's been the good egg, and there's been good egg old hickory. The drunken egg and uh, two others that I have in testing, and I have two other Logan's rubs that are for uh, barbecue, p- 
because down here in, in Memphis, there's a um, Memphis MMA barbecue judge. I'm a certified Memphis MMA barbecue judge, and oh. and uh, you, uh, I've got a blog that's been going for for a few years now. I put it on Urban Spoon. I believe I'm still number six, number six on Urban Spoon on my blog, and I have a few spice rubs. And just really working hard. I've got a YouTube channel, and um, that that's been going really good. That's about nice. it. That's about it. Look at you. You got a whole. All types of things going on. That's very good. So you're 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 busy, busy. It sounds like you're keeping busy. You got all this stuff going on, and you're you're going to work on your own book. That's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. But well, but when you're busy, you're you're not you're not wondering what what everybody else is doing. You're you're yeah. just thinking about how you can get what you're doing better. Right. And that's one of the things I like about being busy. And the other thing that I hate about being busy is you don't have any time to play, like, any video games or anything. You're just busy. <laughs> that's, it's kind of a, a good and bad thing, so, yeah. Now, what, what, are, what are some of your favorite games to play? Uh, well, I play most of the shoot 'em ups I have a Steam account. I enjoy Steam. Uh, I do play the strategy games like uh, StarCraft II sometimes, and I had Age of Empires, but somehow I lost that one. That one was a great game. Uh, hmm. The Team, Team Fortress Two was great. Is great. I still play that one. Uh, Battlefield Four, I like that one. Uh, wow. The the Call of Duty, they're all great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm a pretty hard gamer, cool. uh, but I never got into League of Legends. It, the the launcher took too too long to update. That that's about all I have to say about that one. <laughs> uh, now how about the other contestants? Do you still keep in touch with them? Yeah, yeah, we all keep in touch through all the social media stuff. I'm, all my social media is uh, Logan Junior Chef. That's also my YouTube and my blog is Order Up with Logan at blogspot.com. Cool. So now, what are the actual future plans for Logan? Like, you are only 12 years old. Say when you're 22 yeah. years old, you're 32 years old. Like, where do you see yourself wanting to be when you're 22? Oh, well, that, well that's, a, that's too far down the line. We we need to come back a <laughs> few years to, like, uh, 14. 14 is nice, or 13. Other one of those. Hopefully doing my own cooking show around then. I I really want to get my cooking show right now, or in in a year or sometime. Just I really would like to have one, and um, I really don't know what the future holds, but I can't wait to go to college. Look at you! You impress me with every word you say. You know that, right? <laughs> you really do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you should really be proud of yourself because, like I said, you're a really smart kid. You're beyond advanced for a 12-year-old in my eyes between your cooking talent and just your um, maturity is incredible. So you should be very proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I hope to see you doing some reality uh, or uh, cooking shows, you know. I think that would be great yeah. to have a yeah. have a, a young kid that can relate to other kids and teach other kids to be a, you know it could be an influence on these kids to learn to want to cook. Yeah, cook, cooking is one of those those arts like like jewelry. It, it could kind of slightly go out of style. I mean, there there would always be jewelry, but it would kind of go down a bit. Um, computer making that that might go down a bit one day, but. Everybody's got to eat. There are three meals a day, every day. So why not eat delicious food? Why why eat why eat bad food when you could have delicious food? Absolutely, absolutely. Words well spoken, my friend. So all right, so <laughs> let's uh, let, let's get all your plugs out there again. Make sure people can find you. Rattle them off. All right. So. Every- all right. So. Let's get started with my blog. My blog is Order Up with Logan at blogspot.com. My all my social media. I have Twitter, Instagram, um, 
Facebook, that's all Logan Jr. Chef, I believe. And I also have a YouTube channel that is also called Logan Jr. Chef. And I can't wait to hopefully do a cooking show one day. Um, nice. Just keep on down this line of cooking. Uh, that's now, are you I doing think. any of those? Are you doing any of those pop up uh, like restaurant things in your area? <laughs> no, no. The the people here in Memphis, it, it, we we don't do any any pop up restaurants. We're we're <laughs> all about the the grit and grind, the Grizzlies. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, before I let you go, if you could just uh, maybe cut an ID for me, just. This is a Master Chef Junior Season Two winner, Logan, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Uh, all right, so hi, this is uh, Logan, Master Chef Junior Season Two winner, and you are listening to Totally Driven Radio. Great, thank you so much, Logan. Have a good night. Play some video games and cook some more good food. I definitely will. Bye. <laughs> Take care. There he goes, everyone. I will. Thank you. You're welcome. And we'll we'll talk soon. Take care, man. Thank you again. I will. And thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right, everybody. There he goes. The winner of season two of MasterChef, Logan. That kid's amazing. He really is. I, yeah, I, I mean, still. he managed to cut the ID on the first time, and we have some, like, the big celebrities that have been in the business for decades that couldn't manage that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have professional broadcasters that usually screw it up, and, and here Logan <laughs> nailed it at one shot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. funny. I, I'm telling you, man, the, these kids just amaze me. I, I get blown away. And, and as he was telling me what his dishes were, I'm saying to myself, I don't believe a 12-year-old has to dumb it down for me. <laughs> no, it is funny. You're like, I don't know what any of that is. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did. When I watch that show every week, I turn to my wife. I'm like, do you know what that is? Like, I don't know what, you know. Dude, I'm a cheeseburger, meatloaf, wings, and pizza guy. Like, right, and I'm happy. right. You know what I mean? Like, when they're cooking all that stuff, my mind just gets, like, overwhelmed. Like, I have no idea. It's like like they're talking a foreign language to me. <laughs> 